गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर प्रशांत आई एम अ पीडेटिक न्यूरोलॉजिस्ट वर्किंग इन चाइल्ड न्यूरोलॉजी सिंस लास्ट टेन ईयर्स टूडे वी विल जस्ट टॉक ऑन चाइल्ड इपिलेप्सी वॉट इज मीन बाई चाइल्ड इपिलेप्सी विल गो थ्रू द फ्यू पॉइंट्स वॉट इज मीन बाई इपिलेप्सी what are the reasons for the child epilepsy uh, how it spread or how uh, it's uh, getting uh, um, that is the pathophysiology then uh, what are the reasons uh, what are the investigation required and what to do when a child gets a convulsion uh, in front of you and what is the treatment so uh, let us start with the epilepsy definition in grossly epilepsy or fits or convulsions means any child uh, getting a generalized tonic clonic convulsion or any abnormality in the brain when the current doesn't pass in a proper way child get a convulsion convulsion means fits so we will uh, move towards the definition of the epilepsy epilepsy means any abnormal activity in the brain that creates seizure fits or convulsion <coughs> there are so many misconception about the child epilepsy that uh, uh, it is a contagious disease but uh, that means it will spread if you touch that person but this is totally wrong so now we will move towards what is uh, uh, what are the reasons for the epilepsy any child suppose did not cry at the birth that is the hypoxia we uh, it will turn into a, sometimes it may cause the epilepsy any uh, uh, problem in the brain like any tumor that may also cause the convulsion then any child gets the low sugar low calcium that also creates a fits or seizure or what are the other causes like any infection to the brain uh, then uh, child uh, suppose by birth some abnormality like uh, uh, brain has not developed in a proper way uh, then also it causes the epilepsy when we doesn't find any reason we will call it as a idiopathic or without any reason epilepsy there are few more epilepsies which are very difficult to treat these are the genetic epilepsy few are the metabolic epilepsy Uh, now uh, what are the types of epilepsy grossly to understand what is uh, there are two types that is a generalized tonic clonic convulsion or generalized epilepsy and focal epilepsy so in generalized epilepsy child will have a seizure throughout the body they will the whole body will be shaking there will be upturn of the uh, up rolling of the eyeball uh, they may sometimes bite the tongue there may, may be sometimes Uh, drooling or uh, water coming from the mouth so this is called as a generalized epilepsy now focal epilepsy what is mean by focal epilepsy when one part of the body suppose only one hand or one limb or one part of the uh, face or one part of the eye is blinking that is called as a focal epilepsy again focal epilepsy divided into complex partial seizure and simple partial seizure third type of epilepsy now depending upon the reason like uh, symptomatic epilepsy that means uh, uh, sugar is low calcium is low we will call it as a uh, uh, symptomatic epilepsy now remote symptomatic epilepsy what is mean by that suppose a child did not cry at the birth or any head injury but now after 2 or 3 years child is getting fits we will call it as a remote symptomatic epilepsy because that damage has happened in the past like maybe one month before one year before or two years before now third type of epilepsy that is the idiopathic means there is no reason and in one of the most common epilepsy in the ch- a child age group that is the syn- syndromic epilepsy that is child is or epileptic encephalopathy means child will have fits along with that the child's development will be affected means child was initially suppose able to sit but after starting that fits child is unable to sit unable to walk not recognizing parents so this is called as a epileptic encephalopathy or uh, epileptic uh, syndromes now these are the causes of the epilepsy 
now what to do to diagnose epilepsy uh, we have to perform certain investigation like mri brain ct scan brain eeg and few of the blood tests now we will first move towards the eeg so what is eeg eeg is the electroencephalogram uh, like for heart we do the ecg we do the uh, eeg for the brain how does it uh, give us a diagnosis or how does it help what is the eeg so eeg will be done by placing few wires or electrodes over your head and that wires will get attached to a system or a computer where it shows how current is passing through every part of the brain whether suppose this current is passing abnormally throughout the brain uh, on both side it will call it, call it as a generalized epilepsy suppose there is a problem in the brain flow or current flow on one side suppose on the one side of the brain we will call it as a focal epilepsy in that eeg will help us to location of the fits either generalized focal focal in that whether uh, the part of the brain like frontal lobe parietal lobe or occipital lobe is involved and it helps to diagnose uh, epilepsy as well as to give the treatment that is the prognosis also now along with the eeg now what is need to be done before doing any eeg you have to do a ask the child uh, uh, for the sleep deprivation that means suppose you have to do the eeg test tomorrow ask the child to get up early morning or uh, uh, suppose he sleeps for 6 hours daily ask him to take a sleep only for 3 hours then while coming to a eeg wash your head properly with a shampoo don't apply oil while coming to the eeg should have the full stomach food so that when child comes to us for the eeg procedure child should sleep during that procedure and ideally child uh, eeg has to be taken in two state during awake and sleep so that we will get a good type of eeg it will help us to diagnose epilepsy if we diagnose the epilepsy correctly then only we'll be able to give a correct diagnosis and if the correct diagnosis correct treatment so one investigation eeg we have completed now second investigation that is the ct scan of the brain when there is a mri is not available you can do the ct scan now how does ct scan help ct scan will tell you what is the damage in the brain any tumor is there and what is the location but this doesn't give us a good idea but instead of CT scan, MRI give us a very good idea about our epilepsy. Suppose child is getting only one side fits on the right side. So when we do the MRI and we see there is a problem, hypoxia or neurocystis acosis or one tumor on the left side. So we have to diagnose accordingly. Suppose child, we are not finding any reason for the epilepsy without fever child is getting fits so we have to look into the mri whether while uh, like by birth any abnormality in the development of the brain any metabolic problem tumors or any particular epilepsy if mri is normal that doesn't rule out the epilepsy sometimes because of uh, like mri may be normal but child may be getting so many fits per day few metabolic problem can be identified with the mri brain now uh, we will move towards the blood test now why blood tests are important because in the uh, child age uh, metabolic epilepsy again common so few of the investigation like serum glucose serum calcium uh, tandem mass spectroscopy that is the metabolic test we have to identify to know the underlying etiology or cause of that uh, epilepsy so now after a, a diagnosis of epilepsy with the EEG uh, that is electroencephalogram MRI brain CT scan brain few of the blood tests now we will move towards uh, what is the treatment now treatment again we have to see suppose we are in a community we are seeing we are in a suppose in a, a function or on the in a bus or in a community hall a child get convulsion 
so what to do as a general person not as a doctor also so you should not create any crowd around the patient uh, take out the patient to a safe place where he doesn't get injury uh, like that means suppose a child is getting convulsion take out the child to a safe place where you can make him sleep lie down on one side why on only one side suppose child getting convulsion and getting drooling or water if you keep the child straight it will choke his airway and there are chances of that so turn the child to one side so that water will or saliva will come down from the one corner of the mouth loosen the cloth so that there will be air entry properly then don't force anything into the mouth any spoon so that it will danger or sometimes it damage the teeth third thing you have to do uh, don't try to stop the convulsion it will again harm the child uh, now these are the few things don't try to give the like uh, sleepers or leather atom or a key to hold that person or any onion these are the misconception that onion uh, any metallic thing or a key will stop the convulsion that doesn't happen convulsion will stop on its own so during that parent you have to support that child with the proper airway so once you turn that child to one side suppose you are having midazolam spray which is generally available with a patient uh, bag uh, remove it spray it into the nose two times on the right side two times on the left side if it's available suppose it's not available uh, there is no question as i said what not to do so these are the few things we should not avoid and few things we should do it so once convulsion stop immediately shift the child to a hospital even convulsion doesn't stop you have to inform to a ambulance and shift the child to the hospital they will take care in a emergency department with the injection now uh, uh, this is a emergency situation what to do and what not to do now moving towards the epilepsy treatment now what is the treatment once child is stable we have diagnosed that child is having convulsion but now a doctor a medical person has diagnosed that your child has a epilepsy now uh, epilepsy treatment there are so many drugs are there where we can treat with a medication for example gardenal uh, that is the phenobarbital then phenytoin uh, then levetiracetam sodium valproate uh, then uh, uh, oxcarbamazepine carbamazepine clobazam clonazepam these are the few medication which are available but one drug for one epilepsy one type of seizure like suppose child is having uh, generalized seizure disorder or generalized epilepsy generally we use the uh, sodium valproate which is the safest drug safe drug we cannot say safe no one no ideal drug is safe then epilepsy uh, for epilepsy levetiracetam uh, one of the safe drug commonly used is the again phenobarbital as it's very cheap easily available in a government hospital also after that freezium or clobazam is commonest drug which we use for the uh, epilepsy third thing like uh, levetiracetam or levetra or kepra solution which we use for the treatment it has less side effect but may be having few side effect let's let's compare with the other conventional anti epileptic drug this uh, levetiracetam or levetra is having less uh, uh, less side effect now these are the drugs once we diagnose a epilepsy with the help of a child neurologist uh, he will guide you for how many years you have to take a treatment so once you start the treatment for the epilepsy you should not stop without medical consultation you have to give the regular follow up to a doctor monthly or once in a two month or once in a three months according to the type of epilepsy now why this follow up is required with the doctor just to know whether your medication is giving any side effect uh, anything is happening any recurrent convulsion are happening we need to uh, 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 diagnose the side effect uh, of the medication and uh, we need to go for the electroencephalogram that is eeg depending upon type of epilepsy like uh, type of epilepsy like uh, absence epilepsy uh, 
we need to repeat it after uh, six months or one year whether your medication is working or not your epilepsy uh, treatment is giving good result or not so it will give a grossly idea so you can use the EEG in that aspect uh, so this is overall treatment now uh, if there are a few questions which uh, parents may want to know now my child is having epilepsy will it be lifelong answer is no in few type of epilepsy and in few type of epilepsy it's yes but if it's a generalized epilepsy or absence epilepsy generally treatment will be there for two to three years once he is normal child is seizure free that means child is not getting any seizure you can after doing EEG, you can stop that under medical observation. But there are few epilepsies like juvenile myoclonic epilepsy where we need to give the medication. But maximum epilepsies can be cured with the treatment, can be modified with the treatment. So epilepsy is not a phobia. Now second question, uh, is there is any restriction of the activity in my child's life? if my child is having epilepsy uh, example like will my child be able to go to the school will my child be able to give the correct uh, exams or study well second question will extracurricular activities get affected because of this so answer is yes if your child is having epilepsy your child is as normal as you are uh, suppose it's a normal generalized epilepsy and child is previously was going to school he can continue with a normal school with normal performance with normal results so child with epilepsy can go to school study well as of a normal child and get a good marks with a distinction also if he follows a proper uh, treatment now second thing extracurricular activities like swimming cycling skating Sometimes there is a phobia that you should be aware of fire and water. Why they say? Because suppose child is swimming and he gets a convulsion that during that period, there may be danger to his life. So we should allow the child to swim, but someone observer should be there to look whether he is getting any convulsion during that period so that we will avoid the life threatening event. While cycling also or skating also the same thing some observer or attendant should be there so that he can live a normal life. There is no restriction in his life unless and until child is getting daily conversion on daily basis then it's contraindicated. But a routine epilepsy or idiopathic epilepsy or epilepsy which is good type and child is getting good control there is no restriction. He can do every, each and everything what a normal child is able to do. Topic of the epilepsy I want to just highlight few points there is a definitely difference between a adult neurologist and child neurologist so a child with epilepsy should go usually to a pediatric neurologist only second thing epilepsy is a disorder which can be treated or cured third thing this is not contagious this is so even you can eat uh, uh, behave like a normal kid with that child so it is not contagious so you should not have that phobia and uh, under medical supervision if you take a proper treatment it will easily get cured so you should not have phobia about the epilepsy and you should properly consult a pediatric neurologist your epilepsy will get cured depending upon provided it is a good type of epilepsy or depending upon the type of epilepsy thank you like and subscribe eagle health and beauty